David Hockney created this glowing and glorious picture of sunrise on his iPad a few weeks ago. He's made pictures from nature every day through this bitter spring, as his artistic stand against despair. And what could be more hopeful than the sun coming up? And yet it's painful too, because it reminds me of the sunrises we've lost, the ones shut away inside Britain's locked museums. Whenever I go to the National Gallery, I am hypnotically drawn to this painting by Giovanni Bellini, the first great genius of the Venetian Renaissance. I can't get over its immediacy. You just know he must have looked with wide open eyes at the way the dawn light infuses the morning sky and tinges the clouds with rosy fire under a dark blue blanket of receding night. I love that little white town on the hill. So obviously not Jerusalem, but a real place he's seen in the Veneto region. It's not just their intense colours these two sunrises have in common. Bellini painted his in the late 1450s. Hockney was using the Brushes app in April 2020. But their attitude to art is the same. Hockney, unusually for a 21st century artist, believes in the values and methods that fired Bellini that art is about observing nature and drawing it accurately. The rising sun is a challenging theme for an artist. It's an ephemeral phenomenon that only lasts moments. That's why the defining masterpiece of French Impressionism is Claude Monet's painting of this smoky sunrise. It's a manifesto for art that chases the fleeting passage of light and the restless atmospherics of everyday life. But that wasn't an entirely new idea when Monet painted Impression Sunrise in 1874. A walk through the National Gallery unfolds one ethereal sunrise after another. Just look at the blue skyline in Titian's Noli Me Tangere, in which the risen Christ rears away from a passionate Mary Magdalene. The last shades of night haunt it as the rising sun fills the sky with warm yellow. Dawn's brightness hits a village on a hill, which may be a memory of Titian's own childhood home. And dawn breaks over Venice itself, in this painting by Titian's contemporary Girolamo Savoldo. You can't see the sun just yet, but its light is reddening those strands of cloud and we know day is coming up over the lagoon. These paintings by Titian and Savoldo see sunrise as a time of ghostly uncertainty, a moment of mystery when supernatural scenes might be glimpsed. Here's J.M.W. Turner's Sun Rising Through Vapour. It shares Monet's fascination with the veiled orb of the sun shimmering in a misty morning. Time is of the essence in this painting. Turner tracks the sun in the sky and measures the day by it. The sun is a clock. You can feel the bustle of early morning in the gathering light itself. It hangs next to Turner's Dido building Carthage. This is still morning, but the mist has cleared and the sun over North Africa is already searing yellow. Light expresses history. The Carthaginian Empire is young, a rising power. It's morning in Carthage, but this empire will fall and be eradicated from history by the time the sun sets. And this is why Turner is different from Monet. He's fascinated by changing light and shifts in the atmosphere, but he also sees the sun as a symbol. He's a romantic artist for whom its light represents some primal supernatural force. His last words are said to have been the sun is God! Turner worships the sun by studying the nuances of light. The German Romantic artist Caspar David Friedrich looks inward instead. I don't believe he ever saw this dawn sunrise, or needed to. It's a vision. This is dawn as a radiant uncanny dream. It's a Wagner prelude in paint. 
And the surprising thing is that Hockney's vision of dawn has a lot in common with the romantic intensity of Friedrich. There's a touch of romantic obsession to his project of painting landscapes every day through this awful spring. Look at the red fire hitting the grass in this picture of sunrise. Is that pure observation? It's more like a flare of passion. For now, until it's judged safe for museums to reopen, we've lost all those sunrises in the National Gallery. But the sun still comes up every morning. And David Hockney is there to see its promise of a new day. <laughs>